Hey, 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 welcome back to the Passive Buddies podcast. And today we are literally going all in on the passive side where you can put your feet up, relax and let things work for you. And we're going to talk exactly how to do that. Today, we obviously, as usual, have Brandon, who looks as passive as ever with his <laughs> cool little headphones and his tank top. How are you, buddy? I am doing good. I am still bright and bushy. I haven't been drinking coffee for the last uh, couple of weeks. And so um, my eyes are still adjusting to this. Uh, they're not like ready to go, but they are like, I'm ready to go. Just my eyes are a little bit um, squinty today. <laughs> so as we said, like, we're going to be talking about how to turn your side hustle passive. Okay. Cause like what happens when you start, you have to put some, like you have to put some effort in, like no matter whether it's crypto and you're doing research day trading and you're doing again some research affiliate marketing you're putting out some branding like every side hustle every business requires some form of active work before it turns passive would you agree oh yeah definitely i mean it, you need to start building your active income and build out those systems and then obviously you use that money that you've built with to buy passive income if that's systems if that's outsourcing and we'll go over all those details here in a second but you definitely need to spend some time in building a side hustle and create that active income before you can turn it passive 100 percent. and as you say like if we go for the traditional online business scenario like you've got you've got like dropship and you've got affiliate marketing you've got mlm stuff like network marketing there's loads of different avenues that you can create a side hustle online content creation itself is a side hustle now um, mm -hmm. and then obviously like becoming a brand and influencer stuff like that and um, all of those businesses the and every business model has four fate like four corners to it. it's got marketing fulfillment sales and operations and then when you start you're gonna have that situation where you you're covering a bit of everything and um, so at that stage of year it's quite active and it's not the passive side hustle that was promised on the YouTube ad. Because ah. there's a bit of work to do. Uh, have you found that, obviously, when... Because you started with a bit of affiliate marketing before you went into mm -hmm. software. So did yep. you find that sort of same scenario when you were building up that brand? Um, yeah, so definitely. I mean, I started off with, um, just like you said, affiliate marketing. I went through the One Funnel Way Challenge, and I ended up selling sales funnels to people that just didn't know how to... Um, I guess, build a sales funnel. Mm -hmm. And so I, that was active. I was marketing myself, I was selling myself. And so, and if you guys want to take the one funnel away uh, challenge, I definitely, if they, I don't know, they probably still do it. It's an amazing program. So yes. definitely check out the show notes down below. But um, yeah, we, I started off as an affiliate marketer. I ended up selling, making sales funnels and then getting into software. And even now, I mean, I'm building a software business and we're doing a lot of different things within that where people can white label our, our software and that sort of thing. But ultimately, I'm still working on act, building that active income and then using that to then buy more passive income. And so what is great about software is even though it is, quote unquote, like passive income, it's recurring. So you, there is work to be done depending on if you guys listen to our previous a podcast about how to quit your nine to five. I mean, I have the freedom number, but now it's increasing the lifestyle. I mean, sure, we go on vacations every single, like we're going on an 11 day vacation to Hawaii. We just went, got back from Cabo in March. We went to California and um, where else did we go? We went to somewhere else recently, but I mean, we do go on a lot of vacations, but we want to go on more vacations or and hire like a full team to do everything. So it's just, and we'll get into those kind of out, uh, automating and outsourcing later in this podcast. So definitely stick around and remember to like and subscribe to the podcast so that you get all the juicy, juicy details of all the great content we're putting down. But yeah, I totally agree that um, it, you do need to build out an active income first and all the side hustles say that it's, oh, it's so passive, but in reality, you're going to do some work up front. Yeah, and that's obviously like, for instance, like my main main side hustle or online business is the fact that I love she. I had to build out 
the, the funnel. I had to build out the emails. Like I had to build all that autopilot stuff in place. And this is where we talk about building systems because now the only thing I actually have to focus on is just lead generation. And to be fair, you can outsource lead generation and you can outsource content creation, etc. cetera. Um, so building that system is the first part of your journey to turn in it's like passive. So building out your email marketing, that goes on for, as I said, like I've got an email campaign that lasts 30 days. Like I don't have to, the minute an email comes in, I don't have to touch them for 30 days. All of that is on autopilot, promoting different offers and talking to them and building up my Facebook group, YouTube channel, podcast, all those different things. And um, all is built in that system on the back end. That back end is crucial because that is the thing that will get you off the content hamster wheel. That is the thing that will get you off the, the DMs where you, you're hustling and trying to sell to somebody is by having that autopilot system that is needed to build. And then up front, like that system's working away. And then you just need to get people into that system. Oh, thoughts on that one. Yeah, I mean, trust me, his automation system is amazing like your brian your automation like for trello and slack and all these things that just save you so much time i mean if you had to do that like manually every single day it, that'd be all the whole day that you would spend your day on is doing moving things from one thing and messaging people and sending an email and you know following up with a second email sequence of the person that opted into your lead funnel all that would take up so much time, but your the way you set up those automations just really just are quite outstanding. Thank you. Um, to be fair, it's one thing I absolutely love to do. Like no matter where I go, no matter what I do, it's like, right, how can we speed this process up? How can we automate this process? So I was like, I'm not working. No, not when there's, <laughs> not when the computer can work for you. It's like, why the hell would I do it when Excel can do it, Zapier can do it, email marketing could do it? It's like, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. Um, so. I use the likes of Zapier and Public Connect um, to create um, automations, and that helps build that system. I use Active Campaign for my email marketing, and I use ClickFunnels for my funnels. Like those systems, just those three little softwares, massively change the game in terms of how much admin I need to do, how much marketing I need to do, like management of staff, following up with leads. All of that is is built into this system that allows me to just actually sit here and record a podcast instead of sliding into someone's dms and cold pitching someone like all of these things allow me to concentrate on stuff i actually enjoy about business rather than the back end boring bit that ironically makes you money yeah i mean the more systems you can build and the more you can automate the more you're going to essentially save money because you're not having to hire a va to i mean you're you'll need vas down the road Okay. But ultimately, you if you can have these a lot of these techie things that can automate and take kind of the VAs out of them, it one it helps with not screwing things up. Things are consistent; they're not you know taking a sick day or falling behind because these systems are running twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, and that's the easiest way. And all the links that all the software that we use are down below. So definitely check that, check that out from ClickFunnels, ActiveCampaign, Zapier, Pabli Connect. All of these are great little tools to use. Yeah. And I think you, you touched on something really, really good. Um, and it does break down the phases of you of like how you turn this passive. So like first is obviously like you're building the system, you're tweaking it, you're testing it and all those different things. And the next thing people will do, which I highly say do not do is after they've tested and tweaked this little like thing that they've got going on the first thing they'll do is oh, i've got a list of jobs right boom here's a va you do my list of jobs when actually you need to figure out as many automations as possible because as brandon said if your va has a sick day and then the workload falls back on you it's like shit it's actually but now you've got a new list of stuff that you do with your free time that is now eating into it you actually need to automate as much as possible before you ever look at outsourcing. So every little task that you do, every repetitive task that you do, that you can identify as a trigger point. Now, a trigger point is an action that can kickstart an automation, like someone putting an email in, someone moving a Trello card across to the next phase of play, um, someone booking a sales call, all of these different things are trigger points that you can identify and then create automations on the back end 
is get as much of your business automated, then create your list of ta- tasks that cannot be automated, and you'll be very surprised at what you can, then give that to a VA. So outsourcing is actually the last thing to do. So why should yeah. you pay a VA to do something when a software that you're probably already paying for will probably do it for you? And they're much cheaper. And that goes into reducing those expenses. I mean, that's a great way to really keep things consistent in your business is automated automation. I mean, we're doing, we're going through a whole automation revamp right now because of how we're driving our business now. And it's, it's, it's so much easier. It's going to take up a little bit of time up front, but in the grand scheme of things, how many hours you save, how much money you save and how much more money and consistency in your business you'll have is just outstanding. Okay, perfect. I, I love the fact that you've said you're going through like the automation section at the moment, also revamping it, et cetera. Um, so what things are you looking at to automate to make it even more passive than you, your boring passive income already is? <laughs> yeah, so we, for us, we've had a software company for a while and we were doing white label. And for instance, um, we're redoing our automations for being able to create a template for our so with high level you're able to white label it and then you're able to create sub accounts so that's like you creating uh click funnels putting your name on it and then being able to sell click funnels to someone else instead of accepting an affiliate commission you can charge whatever you want and so in doing so i can create a automation that gives them their sub account it gives them all the uh, campaigns, the abandoned cart sequences, the sales uh, purchase, you know, all those different email sequences, the nurturing sequence, all that gets added to their sub account. All the um, funnels are added to their sub account and all their trigger, uh, what are they called? Trigger links, not trigger links, uh, just triggers. They're called just triggers. And I think they have web flows in there too. So all that gets added to their account automatically. And then an email sequence that will automatically send them saying, here's your purchase. These are your login details. This is go through this training. All the training is going to be uh, in a membership portal where they'll have access to that. So I'm building out that again. And so all these different things that will automate that system so that they have a kind of a done for you I guess SaaS company that they can kind of do what I'm doing, but because they're able to white label our software, they get pretty much our whole setup. So they're able to resell our software, which is a Facebook CRM um, as their own. They're able to collect hundred percent of that payment versus like a affiliate who gets 30%. So all these different things are uh, I'm doing right now to kind of automate and take my time away from it so that um or takes time away from me having to do it and so then instead of me doing it manually and so once that's all done uh once someone makes a purchase someone has a built-in automation um SaaS company in a sense where they can sell and they just need to focus on the um the driving of traffic and so it makes it really easy for them it makes it easy really easy for us and we get them as a customer for longer because all that's kind of done for them. I absolutely love it, as you say. So basically, by building out like like automations, the members area for the training, you're reducing your customer service, you're reducing your FAQ scenario, you're reducing quite a lot of touch points. These guys can actually walk through, build out their, their software company just by following your videos in that members area that will they will automatically get access to. And it's just... It's just insane. So basically, people are able to white label your software, which obviously gives you recurring income, which is a great way of turning anything passive is monthly recurring income. And then those guys are basically getting an automated system for themselves that then allows them to basically go and create the exact same thing. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's that's what's so great about automation and the why I love high level too is because I can create these sub accounts. And so what I can essentially do is I can charge them a little bit more and um, as in like an upsell, for instance, and then have a, if they buy the upsell of say, for instance, having a VA set everything up or have me set it all up, I can literally just 
create a email campaign that goes to a Trello board or a Slack um, channel that says, hey, VA, can you put this together on this subdomain? These are the login credentials. They have all the training to actually do that. And so they then have the, the customer then has a done for you system in a sense. All they need to do is focus on sales because they don't need to worry about the tech stuff, setting that all up, or they can do it themselves. I mean, I think my videos, there's only eight videos to set up the whole thing. So it doesn't take a long time, but um, all this automation, all this can be done through automation. Nice. Absolutely love it. So as we say, like obviously the journey to turn your side hustle positive, or passive is as you're going to have to do a bit of both from work and we get that and you need to appreciate that no matter what the YouTube ad says or what the webinar says, you are going to have to do some upfront work guys and no successful business does fuck all. So you are going to have to do something and then it's about turning it passive. So get, get that system built. Okay. Test it, tweak it, make sure it works, automate everything you can and then outsource the rest. And then you can enjoy your strawberry daiquiris on a beach, taking nice little pretty photos of your drinks. Yeah, it's so true. Um, I mean, and it's funny because a lot of these people think that it like, I'll give you an example for affiliate marketing. People talk about, oh, it's being on the beach and I can work from anywhere. And, you know, I'm on my laptop, living my laptop lifestyle. But in the reality, it's, I mean, you're, especially if you're doing it organically, mm-hmm. like, sure, it's great to be on the beach working from a laptop, but are, are you really enjoying that um, beach or are you really just working in a different location? Um, I mean, and are you really looking at the beach or are you like hard in the paint, like trying to get that next customer and slide into this, someone's DMs? Because um, I would rather be in my my office working than working on a beach because one, the sun is going to be annoying in my face. Uh, it's, it could be hot. Uh, there could be just, I get distracted. So people running through bikinis like um, Baywatch would like yeah. distract me. So it wouldn't be a good work environment for me. And we mm-hmm. talked about environments uh, in a previous podcast. So definitely check that video, that uh, podcast out. And that absolutely perfect, mate. Absolutely right. As you said, like, and the more you can turn passive, the more you don't have to open that laptop on the beach, the more you can just stare at the girl running in a bikini or exactly. stare at the bloke in, with the six, six pack of abs. Okay. Which is probably brand new. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm up 10 pounds. I'm really excited. So I'm, I'm getting back to where I want to be. So I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> Love it, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in till the end of the episode. And um, please, again, like, subscribe, follow, comment. Obviously, we, we really appreciate it. It does help. And we will see you on the next episode. Peace.